Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We are broadcasting live from Children's Hospital and Medical Center for a conversation about social media and kids' mental health and how you can help the child or teen in your life navigate our digital world in a way that is safe and healthy. Joining us today is Dr. Jennifer McWilliams. Uh, she is a child and teen psychiatrist with Children's Behavioral Health. Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's an important conversation and we wanna invite you to share any questions you might have specific to social media and pediatric mental health in the comments below. Uh, we'll dive in. Just two weeks ago, the U.S. Surgeon General uh, issued a warning for uh, parents in particular about the dangers, the, the potential harm of social media and ch using with children and children using it. And I'm just curious, what was your reaction to that report? And is it, is it safe to say that it's bad for kids to have access? The Surgeon General's report is actually fairly nuanced and follows in step with what the American Psychological Association and the American Academy of Pediatrics have already stated, that there are good and bad aspects to social media. And beyond that, it's incredibly pervasive. The Surgeon General's report actually states that up to 95% of 13 to 17 year olds are, have exposure to social media mm -hmm. and 40% of 8 to 12 year olds have exposure. So it's out there and it's not going away. But there are positive aspects. There are also a lot of negative aspects and maybe more so. Um, but more importantly, there are a lot of unknowns and a lot of areas where we need to do more research and find out more specifically what the short-term and long-term impacts of social media are on our youth. So from a mental health standpoint, what would you say are the pros and cons of kids and social media usage? So obviously the pros are being able to connect with friends, being able to find people with common interests. You know, underwater basket weaving may <laughs> not be a popular activity in your area, but kids can find a cohort online that mm -hmm. they can interact with. Being able to share and express themselves artistically, those are all definitely huge positives and things that, that we can't ignore about social media. The downsides, however, we have to worry about you know, exposure to inappropriate content. You know, are kids seeing, you know, behaviors that are maladaptive? Are they being exposed to hate and discriminatory behaviors? Um, are kids being exposed to cyberbullying, which is, you know, much more detrimental than even face-to-face -face bullying? We also have to worry about what the Surgeon General quoted as bad actors and right. what I call creepers, mm -hmm. um, the people out there that are predatory and trying to you know, influence young kids, especially young girls. And finally, we have to worry about the comparisons that kids mm. will to make, looking mm -hmm. at body image, lifestyle, abilities, and constantly comparing themselves to ideals that may or may not be realistic. So a lot of unknowns and a lot of potential downsides. Absolutely. What are your top tips for parents on how to help their kids navigate this wild world? So a big part of it boils down to just the advice I give parents on every topic, and that's open communication. You know, mm -hmm. sitting down with your family and coming up with a media digital, you know, plan, you know. Are there going to be, you know, digital free zones in the house? You know, the Surgeon General and the APA are pretty clear that using social media an hour before bedtime can be detrimental to sleep habits. So, you know, putting social media away at, you know, an hour before, having dinners, you know, be social media free. So it promotes mm -hmm. that one-on-one -on -one communication. Beyond that, sitting down and talking to your kid about what they're looking at. So, you know, what are you seeing on TikTok? You know, what's the cutest cat video you saw today? <laughs> you know, is there anything that's concerning about this? Mm -hmm. um, the other part is really modeling good social media use. You know, if you're sitting there telling your kid not to be on social media all the time and constantly have, you know, Instagram on your, you uh -huh. know, phone, that's, you know, kind of speaking out of both sides of your mouth. And kids pick up on that pretty quickly. Yeah, they do. What about the monitoring piece? Like, what is the sustainable, realistic, but also appropriate level of parental monitoring of what kids are doing on social media? So the APA is pretty clear that kids under the age of 12, um, even 14, need almost constant supervision. Mm -hmm. um, that may be more realistic uh, for some families than for others. Certainly there's a lot of software programs out there that can be used. 
I always caution families, however, and my daughter will be the first to admit that if you build a better mouse trap, you're going to end up with a smarter mouse mm -hmm. and they can figure out ways around it. So you can't rely on that. Um, a big thing that I really promote is talking to your kids about digital literacy. You know, what is safe? What isn't? How much mm -hmm. information is appropriate to share? What's not? Mm -hmm. Certainly, you know, having a, an open forum to discuss those topics and, and having your kid recognize that at any moment you may want to look at what they're looking at, that there are no secrets regarding social media in your household. Mm -hmm. You know, we hear a lot about rising anxiety and depression in teens. You, you hear young people coming to you every day talking about these issues. Do you think there's a connection between social media and those conditions in kids? So we always have to be cautious in mental health care about assigning a cause and effect relationship between anything. Mm -hmm. With that said, we do know that there's been a dramatic increase in the amount of mental health concerns since social media has become more prominent. Um, one study has shown that kids that spend more than three hours on social media have twice as likelihood of developing depression and anxiety. You may think three hours, that's an awful lot, um, but the majority of kids, over 60%, report spending three hours on social media a day so it's not that unusual there definitely is some kind of connection but we need to do a lot more research to find out what that connection is you had mentioned you know having the timeouts for um, the devices mm -hmm. and we had a, a mom previously submit a question about this topic which was how do i handle the tantrum when it's time to collect the kid's cell phone you know maybe that hour before bed and you know you could probably take this with social media but any device like any advice for parents in that practical wrestling it away from right. them and right. setting those boundaries yeah so tantrums could be their whole different uh, broadcast yeah. in and of themselves right. but uh, you know, the general principles that I, I recommend is, you know, setting boundaries ahead of time. You know, we will be turning the screen off at, you know, 8 p.m. or whatever the designated time is. Mm -hmm. Giving kids a warning ahead of time. Okay, it's 745, you have 15 minutes left. Um, and then setting appropriate consequences. Okay, if you don't give up your screen, you know, then we're not going to be able to use it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and having, you know, immediate effects for, you know, their behaviors. Mm -hmm. You know, another previously submitted question was what social media format, so I'm thinking, you know, is Instagram, TikTok, is appropriate for what age? And are some kind of, you know, approved and some um, not approved when it comes to mental health? Is it that Clean cut? I wish it was. I wish it was. One of the reasons why this is such an important topic for kids and teenagers is because this is a time of tremendous brain growth and development. Those emotional centers are, you know, flourishing. The logic centers are lagging behind. And every kid's development is a little bit different. Not only is every kid different, but every kid's household and environment mm -hmm. is a little bit different. So what one you know 12 year old may be able to appreciate and manage appropriately may not be ready for someone who's 16 in a different setting does the same go for that question of when is it time for a smartphone and access period let alone which channels exactly and this is a debate that you know i've seen so many families have um mm -hmm. and there is no right or wrong answer. A lot of it, again, boils down to what's the situation for your family? If your kid has to take public transport home from you know, school, you may want them to have a smartphone sooner than later. Um, if, on the other hand, there's someone who has displayed in the past you know, difficulties with setting boundaries and you know, poor friendship decisions, that may be something that you want to hold off on. Again, mm -hmm. something you have to look at not only the kid, but their environment. You know, you mentioned earlier that social media, and this is true of adults too, can be the highlight reel of life, yes. right? It's curated, filtered. How do you help uh, a, a child or a teen with a growing brain um, mm -hmm. and maturity understand like what's true, what's false, what's real, what's not? And that is a huge question that we're trying to figure out. And one of the areas where we really need to do a lot more research, you know, what can kids perceive and understand at what ages? How big of an impact, mm -hmm. you know, does this have at a, for a 10 year old compared to an 18 year old? But certainly mm -hmm. a lot of it goes back to having that open communication and, and appropriate modeling. Mm -hmm. For example, just the other day I was looking at something and something popped up on my phone about how the average height of a woman in the United States was 5'10". Come on, 
not not even close to realistic. So I called my daughter over and I'm like, mm. look at this, what do you think about this? And she's like, that seems awfully tall. I'm like, that is awfully tall, that's not realistic. And so having those conversations about, you know, facts and opinions and misinformation and, you know, reliable sources is something that we can not only, you know, model and facilitate, but pr promote that our kids look at and develop critical thinking. Do you have any practical resources for parents who are like, I don't even know how to use this, or I don't even know what that platform is all about, that they can turn to to just kind of get an education? I mean, Google, but but any yes. other specific expert research validated? So one of the, the great resources that we have in the Omaha area is the Smart Gen Society. And if you look at their website, um, they are dedicated to helping families promote um, good use of social media. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a lot of resources on there. The American Academy of Pediatrics also has a lot of really well validated resources and tools. Um, and the American Psychological Association. The Surgeon General support is fairly readable and accessible, but a little bit dense. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end, they do have a list of resources as well that can be helpful for parents. You know, it's not going away. I mean, it, right. and, and the Surgeon General was really clear about that too. Like it's here, it's here to stay. Um, how do you advise parents to develop that resilience um, and self-esteem to, to, to help their child know they are more than their profile. They're more than their Snapchat account. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of that takes you know place you know in the home. You know, mm -hmm. let's again take to break away from social media. You know, let's build those friendships. Let's foster activities mm -hmm. where you know you're out you know playing in the field and you know doing the activities with friends in real life and having conversations and then sitting down at the end of the day and and talking about what you've experienced and, and what you know is realistic and, and isn't realistic um, and recognizing that adolescence is such a wonderful time but it is such a roller coaster there are going to be ups and downs and being able to be a, a consistent support for your kiddo um, is sometimes the best thing that we can do. You know, for some people who come across this video, it might be like preventative tips, you know, okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get ahead of this. For some people, they might be like, I'm in the thick of this, and I know, or I, I suspect, that the social media usage with my teen is, is, is a problem. Mm -hmm. Are there signs to look for when it's like, okay, this is, this is the, your flag? to yeah, do something. Absolutely. So a lot of different areas. So if, you know, socially a kid is pulling away from his or her friends and not spending time doing activities that they used to really enjoy and be engaged in. Um, academically, if you see a sudden drop in their grades, um, more emotionally, if you're saying, yeah, we need to put the screen away and they have a larger, more negative response than you would expect, mm -hmm. or if they seem to be, you know, um, more upset about little things that appear on social media. Um, and then finally, if you notice disruptions in their sleeping patterns and eating patterns, those are all signs um, that social media has kind of tipped over the edge from casual use into a problem. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do about it? I mean, who, who do you call? Where's the first place to turn if you're like, yeah, this feels unhealthy. So what we really are looking at is, you know, early signs of depression, anxiety. There is some research even about whether or not this is an addiction. And so mm. reaching out to your primary care provider is the best first step so that you can get in with somebody that you know and trust who can help you navigate what the appropriate resources are for your child. Mm -hmm. Well, great guidance. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for having me. This is such a great topic. Your expertise, and we hope it helps people. And please share. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and I loved how Dr. McWilliams kind of landed on. If you ever have any questions or concerns about your child, please reach out. Don't hesitate to contact their primary care provider. Thank you. Take care.